We interrupt this program to bring you a late-breaking development. A giant rogue meteor is on a direct path with Earth. Citizens are urged to remain calm and take all the necessary precautions one would expect to take in the waning moments before the cataclysmic impact of an unyielding meteor. We had an agreement, Max. The Geeks Plotting Freelance Policing Automaton can support your adorable rabbity likeness so long as I get to choose the two. Can't help it, Sam. The image of myself the size of a tacky airport theme restaurant has driven me power mad. Power mad, I tell ya! <laughs> We've just received word that the meteor has penetrated our atmosphere. All I can say is, put your heads between your knees and kiss your asteroid goodbye because nothing short of the second coming can save our miserable hides now. There. I said it, and I'm glad. Uh, guys, but I think it's time we use the Mega Max for its intended purpose. I thought we were. Engage the special meteor eradicating function. Stat. selfless contribution to man and womankind, it's my rare privilege to present you, and those other fellas, these big shiny medals of honor. Well, what do you think of that, huh? What do you do with a robot colossus once its usefulness has run out? Besides scrapping it for spare parts. No! You know feelings, woman? You can't just dismantle our baby like some long-forgotten science fair project. Well, we have to do something. We can't just let it rot in the street. But we need our ridiculously oversized souvenir faded glory because it's so useful. Don't fuck with me! Yeah, and these are just a few of the many uses this little giant provides. Our Mega Max is perfect for hauling nasty trash out to the curb. Not to mentioning opening those stubborn jam jars. It's a godsend when I'm late picking the kids up at school. And talk about the view! Why, on a clear day, you can see almost all the way to the giant robot in the next big city. Those things are all well and good, but I think the Mega Max deserves better. And you should, too. Gee, I never thought of it that way. These menial domestic tasks are beneath our beloved automaton. The Mega Max truly does deserve better. You mean we're putting him to sleep, packing him off to the big scrapyard in the sky? Not quite, Muttonhead. We're taking him to Japan, where it can engage other freakish monstrosities of its kind and be happy. Road trip! We'll have to stock up on high-caliber snacks to keep us bouncing off the ceiling till daybreak. 
No time to stop, little pal. We'll have to make do with that gross of sugar-charged treats we have stashed inside the robot's cavernous nasal passages. But that'll hardly get us out of the harbor. Courage, Max. Courage. Well, here we are in Japan. Land of the rising sun and home to shambling, rubberized beasties of all persuasions. You know, this is exactly what my dreams look like when I eat green bananas in bed. Looks like we got here just in time. This town is desperately in need of our extreme brand of unauthorized freelance policing. Extreme freelance police. Sounds like a committee generated notion for next season, Sam. Quiet, Max. They'll hear you. Come on, you big baby. You want a piece of me? Is the big baby gonna cry? Let's see you cry. Daddy's precious little baby's gonna gush like an evangelist. Hang on. Here we go. Hold the phone, Max. We appear to have hit a wee snag. Check out the fine print in the instruction manual. Warning. Choking hazard. This oversized automaton o destruction contains small parts and is not recommended for gigantic behemoths under three years old. Foiled once again by government regulations and good common sense. We'll just have to find some non-violent way to distract the overgrown ankle biter and lull him into eternal sleepy by time. Perhaps this conveniently abandoned pachinko parlor can be of use. Look what I got for you, Totsy. Come on and get your rattle waddle. <laughs> rock the bye Totsy or the tree tops. When we trade blows, this robot will rock. When the ground shakes, this city will fall. Then down will drop Totsy, diaper and all. <sighs> That little shaver's a light sleeper. He must have a sore bum. I may be shooting off my dog lips here, Max, but I've got a nagging notion that Totzilla's economy-sized hissy fit is the result of parental neglect and a premature transition to solid foods. Then our mission is clear, Sam. Ooh, that's a big nipple. Let the baby have his bottle. My ability to uh, read Japanese is sadly lacking, Max. Are you sure that was a uh, milk tanker? You wanted milk? Yeah, I'm talking about Mountain Dews, baby. Well, I'll be. 
It's noted Nobel laureate professor Schadenfreude and his harem of Mensa level attendants. Yet another throwaway gag ties directly into the A story. It's almost Aristotelian in its beauty. That's right, Sam and Max. This was my sweet revenge for the mess you made out of my survival team mission. I had dreams and desires. Not for me, but for the future of all humanity. <laughs> dreams, huh? <laughs> I'll bet you did. And now you foiled my dreams of vengeance. It's not fair for crying out loud in the mud. They'll get you for this. Easy, Egghead. Don't get your pocket protector in a bunch. I think we may have inadvertently stumbled upon a solution that will rectify all of our problems. You see, Professor, in this way, you can continue your somewhat twisted brand of scientific research in outer space. And our Megamax gets a new job. Something worthy of its complete and utter hugeness. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> Shedding a sentimental tear for a noble deed well done? That and the fact that we just blew off our ride back home. Fear not, little pal. We can always thumb a ride with one of these cuddly atrocities of nature. Don't worry, Max. I've never seen him shoot one of these down yet. That's good, because I'm keeping this big guy. I'm gonna feed him and love him and groom radioactive lice out of his feathers every day. What do you think? I think you're one seriously warped little rascal, Max. Coming from you? That means a lot, Sam.